everybody. I hope that you are all really well. Today's video is the third video of my diabetes series, which I have wanted to do. I feel like I say the same thing when I start every video of my diabetes series. But anyway, last time I spoke about blood sugar machines and why we test our blood sugars. And today I'm going to talk about ketone testing machines, what ketones are, um, and why they are quite a dangerous side of diabetes, but it can easily, easily be avoided. I'm going to incorporate a few personal experiences as well, just to show you how dangerous DKA for short, it's actually diabetic ketoacidosis, but that's just too long. <laughs> just I just want to show you how dangerous it can be. As I always say, by the way, I have linked down below my blog, I do blog posts as well as YouTube videos because I know some people prefer to read and I know some people prefer to watch a video and listen and so if you don't want to listen to me rambling on and you'd rather read about what I'm going to talk about then you can go down below to my description box and just click on my blog and everything will be on there as well. Diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA for short basically occurs when blood sugars or blood glucose is kind of left untreated and it rises too high. We refer to high blood sugars as something called hyperglycemia or hyper for short. And this just basically means that your body has a lack of insulin. And this kind of happens when you're first diagnosed with diabetes. DKA can occur if someone with diabetes stops taking their insulin for a few days. Um, and if high blood sugars are left untreated and, and if you don't have enough insulin in your body. So normally when you eat something, um, your body requires insulin to break down carbohydrates and essential energies. If you have DKA and if you are not injecting insulin into your body, then instead of carbohydrate and energy being broken down, your body actually breaks down your fat and uses that as a source of energy and your blood glucose just continues to rise and rise. This breakdown of the body is what we call ketones and ketones can be detected either in the bloodstream or through the urine. Now the thing about ketones is they are extremely acidic, hence why the name diabetic ketoacidosis. This basically makes you feel very, very unwell. It's something that you have to remember when you have diabetes or, you know, even if you don't, it's that your body needs insulin all the time. Human being basically cannot survive without a supply of insulin in their body. Symptoms of DKA are actually pretty similar to the symptoms of when you are diagnosed with diabetes. But there is kind of two stages to DKA symptoms. There is the early stages of DKA symptoms, which is things like needing to go to the toilet a lot, severe thirst, feeling sick, tiredness, uh, stomach pains and also shortness of breath. But if you have a more severe case of DKA, your symptoms may become a lot more advanced and you experience hyperventilation, which is where you breathe really, really fast, a really fast heartbeat, which is called tachycardia. So your heart rate just goes through the roof. Vomiting, and in some cases, you can vomit blood, which is when you know that things are going really, really bad. You can also experience dizziness and being very, very weak. Um, a large amount of weight loss. You may feel confused or drowsy. Um, some people that have DKA also have quite a pear-like smell coming from their breath or, e or their urine. Sometimes it's not really noticed by the person themselves. Also, like I said, in the worst case scenario, you could slip into a coma. As I mentioned at the beginning, we can test ketones either with our urine or with our blood. And it's very important to test ketones when you've experienced you've been experiencing high blood sugars sort of over 13 minutes for a long period of time 
or if your blood sugars are over 17 and you know even if this is a rare occurrence it's still important to test your ketones and also testing on the days where you're not feeling very well so days where you're feeling a bit run down um, and you're not feeling very hungry it's always important to keep testing your ketones just to make sure that you haven't got any. I haven't actually got any urine testing strips to show you because I did used to use them back when I was diagnosed until about two years ago and then I started testing via bloodstream because I found that this was a lot quicker and a lot more accurate personally for me but some people do prefer to test via the urine test strips. If you are testing via urine test strips then you simply just um, urinate onto some little thin testing strips um, you wait for about 15 seconds and then a colour will appear on the strip and you just match the colour to a colour bar which you will have on your little packet of testing strips. Basically the colour that comes up on the testing strip will tell you whether you have ketones or not and normally it would go from like a very light nude colour to like a dark purple so obviously the darker the colour the more ketones you know you'd have. With testing via blood it is so much easier and it just gives you a really quick and easy reading and I was actually given this testing machine about two years ago. It doesn't come with a needle um, to actually prick your finger with so I just use the needle that comes with my blood sugar machine which you will have seen in my previous video I have linked down below the first and the second video that I have done so if you want to go and check those before watching this one because it will make a lot more sense then go click down below I should have said that at the start of the video to be honest so of course you get your meter. Normally the testing strip would just go at the top here where you can see that little slit. I actually tend to test every Sunday because I mean that's just a personal preference. I like to make sure that my ketones are under control so I test them on a weekly basis unless I am not feeling very well during the week and um, of course I will test them a, a bit more. Um, but yeah, 28th of August was the last time that I tested and they were low, so I didn't have any ketones. On the 22nd, they were 0.2, but again, that is still within a green zone range, and you will know what I mean in a minute. On the 7th, they were 0.2, so it just, you know, it stores on there for you, which is really good. I mean, on this day, on the 26th of June, I had 2 Point zero, which I think is either in the yellow zone or even in the red zone but I'm going to show you what I mean by that in a minute. Then you get your little testing strips which come in this little tube and these are tiny I mean compared to the blood testing strips these are so small so this golden bit at the end would go inside the meter and then you would put your blood on to this side just there. As you can see on here, we have the green, yellow and red zone. You can use that as a way of telling whether you are okay or whether you need, you know, a bit more attention or whether you need to go to hospital. This is looking a bit disgusting, but it will give you an idea of what I am talking about. So Anything below 0.6 is in the green zone, so this is a normal ketone reading, so it just tells you consider rechecking blood ketone levels in 1 to 2 hours if blood glucose remains elevated, so above 13.9. From 0.6 to 1.5, that is the yellow zone, so this indicates that you need a little bit more insulin. It is important to call or follow the rules provided by your diabetes healthcare team and continue to check your blood glucose and blood ketone levels in one to two hours. Um, if they are above 1.5, then this is where you know, you're at a high risk of um, diabetic ketoacidosis and you need to call your healthcare team immediately. 
normally they will, you know, give you some suggestions on what to do. Sometimes they want you to go into hospital to see what has been going on and, you know, if there is anything of high risk then they might keep you in. On that day when I had a 2.0 reading for example, I was away on holiday or I had just come back from my holiday and even though I had a 2.0 reading of ketones, I, I've had diabetes for about 12 years now or just under 12 years and I knew why I had that reading and I knew what to do to treat myself. But if you are someone who struggles to come up with solutions for yourself, then you always, always have an amazing healthcare team behind you and they are always a phone call away or an email away. Even if I was struggling, I would still seek some medical advice, but I kind of know how to do it all myself now anyway. This picture that I'm about to show you was in 2012, I think, in February, and this was when I was at my most unhealthiest. I remember posting this picture on Facebook and looking at it and I was like, oh my goodness. It hit me that I was not well. Before I went to uni, um, and even during my time at uni, was probably one of the periods where I really struggled with my diabetes and I was going through a lot of personal experiences which led to me not looking after myself properly. I felt very self-conscious about my body, um, especially as I was a cheerleader, you know, I wanted a small, thin frame and when you have diabetes, if you do not inject yourself with insulin, as I said, your body starts to eat away at your fat. It starts breaking down your fat. So there were times during university, and I would not recommend this to anybody who has type 1 diabetes. If you are watching and you have type 1 diabetes, I beg that you just do not do this. From personal experience, I wish I hadn't done it. But I would purposefully miss injections so that I would stay skinny and so that I wouldn't put on weight but instead of making me feel better it was actually doing the complete opposite and it was making me a lot lot worse. So during my first year of university I remember I was getting ready to do my first ever performance. It was a really really cold day, it had been raining um, and I, I was a flyer my position was a flyer as a cheerleader and that is the person who gets, you know, thrown in the air. And so you can imagine how much of a physical sport that was, as well as like a mental sport, because you had to really be on it and know what you were doing. I really, really struggled. I don't even know, like looking back at it now, I don't even know how the heck I managed to complete that performance. I was very weak and I did it and that night when I went home I just did not feel well. I didn't eat anything by the time I got home. I mean I drank litres and litres of water and I was in this vicious cycle throughout the whole night of being severely thirsty and drinking litres of water, having to go to the toilet to pass urine because I was drinking so much I kept needing to go to the bathroom. And I had a very, very fast heart rate. I had I was experiencing a lot of shortness of breath. I couldn't breathe properly and I just didn't sleep for the whole night because I was up and down to the toilet. When I woke up the next morning I felt extremely sick and I had really bad stomach pains, I was very weak, I didn't want to eat breakfast, I am someone who loves breakfast, it's like my favourite meal of the day, but that day I just didn't have any appetite in the morning. And as I went to go to the bathroom to again urinate, I just collapsed on the floor and I was vomiting up some blood. I was in hospital for a week. 
And when you have diabetic ketoacidosis, your body becomes very dehydrated and very acidic and you require a lot of drips. So I was put onto drips to rehydrate my body. And you know, it's just, it's not a nice experience. And it took about two to three days for my heart rate to come down again, for me to be able to breathe normally again, for me to be able to eat and drink and sleep. Looking back on, on it now, I just think, why did I do that to myself? And I know that this is a very, very deep conversation, but I'm literally just trying to get through to any of you who have type 1 diabetes and, of, you know, starting to fall into that trap of not taking care of yourself because I know that it's hard. It's a 24-7 condition which you just can't cannot take a time off from. But if you look at it in the long run, it's so much better to inject yourself four to six times a day and keep yourself healthy and avoid having to go to hospital and avoid that whole horrible experience. It has now been over a year I think it's been yeah it's been over a year that I have not had DKA and I have not missed injections for over a year and to be honest I am proud of myself because I have come a long long way and now I realize you know how much healthier I am and how much I can do things I just really hope that this video helps some of you to understand how dangerous some aspects of diabetes can be and especially if you don't look after yourself how quickly things can turn around and you know quickly go downhill for you but I don't want you know this to be like a, a, a depressing video or or something to scare anybody who has type 1 diabetes. Next time I'm going to be talking about what hypoglycemia is so the side of having low blood sugars and what you can do to treat a low blood sugar. If you want to see that video then make sure that you subscribe to my channel and like I said if you want to see any of the previous videos that I've done then they are linked down below in my description box. Give this video a big big thumbs up if you found any of this information useful or if you enjoyed watching it. I'm really sorry that these videos are always super long but it's just a lot of information to try and cram into a short space of time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time for video number four.